2016 Jeep Compass is a relic from another era. Introduced nearly a decade ago, the Compass, and its blocky Patriot twin, precede both Chrysler's bankruptcy and its subsequent tie up with Fiat. The compact crossover is a stark reminder of how far Chrysler and Jeep have come, especially when compared with the similarly sized and priced, Fiatra Jeep Renegade and Jeep Cherokee with which it shares the showroom floor. Not the best choice despite the Compass's clear inferiority, though, consumers continue purchasing the small SUV. Through the first half of 2016, sales are up 80% year over year, with Jeep moving nearly as many Compasses as it did Renegades. Steep discounts are likely fueling this craze. Of course, the Compass isn't entirely bad. For instance, the chassis, after years of incremental improvements, now is fairly refined. In fact, not a single squeak or rattle was heard from the Compass's low-rent, hard plastic interior during its entire stay with us. This is especially impressive given that the little Jeep's ride is as supple as a mule stumbling down the Grand Canyon. The Compass doesn't look half bad, either. Our test vehicle was dipped in Recon green paint and adorned with 75th anniversary edition specific bronze eckled 18-inch wheels, roof rails, tow hooks, badging, and miscellaneous trim. By opting for the celebratory model, buyers also get toys such as a power sunroof, a leather-wrapped steering wheel, and remote start. The package also requires the power value group, which adds automatic headlamps, body color door handles, and a handful of other items. A 2.4-litre four-cylinder mated to a six-speed automatic is the sole powertrain choice in the 75th anniversary edition, and our test vehicle routed its torque through Jeep's light jetty freedom drive aisle wheel drive system. Front wheel drive is standard. A more off-road ready freedom drive 2 system with low range that's paired with a continuously variable automatic transmission CVT is also available on the Compass but not on the 75th anniversary edition, a strange omission given Jeep's off-road history. A less powerful 2.0-litre four-cylinder engine is standard on front-wheel drive, non-anniversary edition models. All told, choosing the Diamond Anniversary Compass will set customers back $27,615 before options. Front-wheel drive costs $1,400 less. A $995 backup camera was our test vehicle's only option and brought along a 6.5-inch Uconnect touchscreen infotainment system. While we like Uconnect in other FCA products, the Compass uses an earlier version with low-resolution graphics and a frustrating Bluetooth system that requires users to connect a mobile device via voice commands. It replaces the standard push-button stereo system and raised the as-tested price to $28,610, a mighty sum for a tiny crossover lacking navigation, automatic climate control, a proximity key, see that adjustment and the driver's seat is mounted extremely high, leather seats, or seat heaters. For what it's worth, True car estimates are now wheel drive compass like our test car can be purchased for more than $6,500 below sticker. Nevertheless, a Honda HRV EXL with navigation can be had for $26,890 and includes all those features that Jeep lacks. Plus, the Al wheel drive HRV provides an additional 2 cubic feet of cargo space with its rear seats folded and another half cubic foot with its rear seats in use. Compared with its showroom full or competitor, the Renegade, the Compass affords 3 cubic feet more cargo space with the rear seats down. Raise the seat backs, and the Compass betters its Italian-made sibling by more than 4 cubic feet. Rear seat legroom is similarly advantageous with the compass providing its occupants an extra 4 inches to stretch out. Slow and none too steady surely, then, the compass must offset its slack of feature content with noteworthy performance, right? Wrong. Despite its engine producing a respectable 172 horsepower and 165 lbft of torque, the compass proved to be at the slow, and loud, end of its class. 
0 to 60 miles per hour takes 9.5 seconds, and the jaunt from 50 to 70 miles per hour is a 7.2 second affair. Those figures trail a far less powerful, 141 horsepower HRV EXLAWD by 0.2 and 0.5 second that we featured in a small crossover comparison test in 2015. While the compass was comparably quiet on the road and at idle, its course four cylinder roared to red line at a screeching 79 decibels, five more than what we recorded in a Renegade 4x4 with the same power blunt. On the plus side, the Jeep's six-speed automatic transmission introduced in the 2014 Compass is a better day-to-day -day companion than the previous CVT, even if it's slow to swap cogs and made only a small dent on the Jeep's performance times. The last all-wheel drive, 2.4-liter CVT equipped Compass we tested hit the 60 miles per hour mark in 9.6 seconds. Unfortunately, the compass doesn't struggle only to get up to speed, it labors to come to a halt, too. Stopping from 70 miles per hour takes a long 188 feet, 25 feet more than the all-wheel drive Fiat 500X we featured in our small crossover Comparo. Even worse, repeated stops resulted in significant brake fade, not the sort of thing you want in a vehicle that macerates at 3 out of 5 stars for frontal crash protection. Fuel economy also disappoints, as the EPA rates the compass at a paltry 20 miles per gallon in the city and 26 miles per gallon on the highway. For comparison, the CVT equipped, our wheel drive Subaru Crossdrag is rated at 2,634 miles per gallon and a 4WD Renegade achieves as high as 2,431. Our compass matched the EPA combined rating of 22 miles per gallon. Thankfully, the Compass's days are coming to an end, as a single all-new vehicle designed to replace both it and the Patriot is expected to arrive before the end of the year.